Hey, it's me, RJB, and I'm back. Today we're diving into part number two of a set between JH, who definitely looks exactly like this, against his opponent, Mitchell, who of course definitely looks just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, without a doubt. These two beefcakes showed off yesterday, where we had a little bit of an unfortunate chain of events for Minchel, where he wound up losing the first two games. He lost as uh, he lost as Terran against Protoss, and he lost as Protoss against Terran. JH started off with a very, very strong performance in those first two games. And today we're diving into game number three. In part number two of this video, so let's turn off the background music, let's edit their races just a little bit. We've got JH here on the I think JH here is on the Zerg. We've got Minchul there on the Protoss. The red Zerg here on the top left of the map is JH. And here we have Minchul. Now don't be confused by the title, not by the title, I mean by their names in game. That barcode as barcode is Minchul. And the versus Minchul, VS Minchul, is JH. And I already explained it in the previous video, but JH really likes to, whenever he's playing against someone specifically, he changes his name to their name and puts versus into the name as well. Basically saying, I'm playing against the name I have in my name. So he starts off with a choke there in the front. Old Lord scouting to the bottom side of the map. Just looking if there's something there. He always likes to scout. Koreans always like to use their Overlord to scout their side spawns. To go a circle around the map with the Overlord. Instead of sending it into the middle. And that scouting pattern is something you won't often see in the West. And that is because a lot of Western players like to go for a proxy mid-gate build order when they are Protoss. And it is very useful to send your Overlord to the middle to scout it. To so you know that it's either there or it isn't there. And whether it's there or not helps determine and make the choice how many Sunkens and Zerklings you're going to make to protect your choke. Now in this particular case, JH just played it very, very safe and went for six Zerklings alongside two Sunkens to protect his choke. Minchul himself though went for a three gateway start opening for one gateway uh, he goes for a pylon on 7 supply, then for a gateway, then another gateway, and then a third gateway and another pylon. Basically, a single gateway is added on with every probe that spawns after the first pylon finishes. It gives him some punching power in the early game, but apparently not enough punching power to break through that choke here. Not enough punching power to really harm JH. So I think this game is looking pretty good for JH here, although JH is trying to get the probe, but Minchul there might be the probe expertly keeps it alive, doesn't lose the cannon either, kills almost all the Zerklings, and JH there gets out micro quite nicely, although it didn't really seem to take Minchul that much effort. But that does really, that helps Minchul with setting up that frontal push that he's definitely without a doubt going for, because he already has one gas winning there and a cyber core there on the way, adding on a cannon in the front there as well just to keep Zerklings and enemies away, he gets on top of the creep column there in the front, but this might cost him a couple of his zealots, so I'm not sure if that trade-off is really that great, but he wants to push those cannons forward. Not sure if it's worth to push those cannons forward, because he already had a cannon there in the back finishing up, but he lost two zealots, killed the creep colony, so it's kind of, well, it might be worth it. Also, it looks like JH lost his overlord because he wasn't focused on this cannon. His overlord flew over the cannon and died. He did scout the base, but he's currently supply blocked, waiting for two overlords to spawn, and that really slows him down. Now he's got a lot of minerals, and he's pretty much forced to build another hatchery. But he's got a lot of idle drones that could have already uh, larvae that could have already been drones, and that really slows him down quite a bit. Because now he's starting with the drones, but his economy is lagging behind because of the delay with his drones. He could have been bigger. He could have been richer. But he isn't. Not yet. A lair there on the way. Quite risky to go for a lair this early. Maybe he's planning on going for lurkers or for mulisks. But we don't often see a lair this early in a Zerg versus Protoss. Specifically not in this situation. Because I think, I honestly think, that 
Minchil might barge through the front door before mule discs are even there. JH still adding on the circles there to the front. Being on only three hatches here in the back means that he cannot really get that many drones up and running very early on, and he cannot make that many Hydras either, but he's going for the Hylas then nonetheless. His Hylas will be a little bit late, because he went for the very late Hylas then. Usually people get that then finished at about 5 minutes in or 5.30. He's going to finish at about like 5.35, but he won't really have enough gas to get everything that he needs. He doesn't have a lot of hatcheries either, so not sure if I really agree with his choice of approach here. He's going for Lurkers, it appears. But there's already a robotic facility out there for Mintel in the front, and a couple of cellars there as well. He's adding on even more gateways on the middle of the map. He added a second nexus. There is the support bay for Reavers. He didn't build a shuttle, so he's not going to shuttle units into the enemy base. I think he's going to go for the Reaver first and put some pressure up with Scarabs on the Suggas in the front. We've got a Corsair on the way as well. Where is it? There is the Corsair. So 5k was on the middle, 3 back at home, Zealot Speed there on the way, we've got Shuttle Speed on the way, level 1 attack also on the way, and more cannons being added on back at home to protect his probes from Mule Discs or a Lurker, Overlord Transport. And I do think JH is going for... Oh no, that's faster Overlord movement. He's not yet going for Overlord Transportation, so he might not go for a cheeky Overlord Lurker drop here in the back. He's mostly focusing on getting the Spire up and running, which is now on the way. Mining from three extractors. There is a Corsair doing some scouting, doing some recon. This Corsair scouting all this here in the back is really valuable for Minchel because now Minchel knows exactly what is going on. And one of those things he knows is going on is the fact that Minchel or JH, I mean JH, that JH does not have a lot of Hydras. So defending for him is going to be very, very difficult. He needs to get those Lurkers finished to, in order to defend this. But I think, I think. We might see an observatory coming out for Minchel here, although he hasn't added it yet. No observatory yet, so no observer. So the Lurkers might just do an amazing job defending. Now, if he had an observer, those Lurkers would have a very, very, very limited amount of use against the Reaver, because the Reaver would just take them down from afar, and the Reavers would not really be effective. The, the, the Lurkers, though, do keep the Zealots away from the choke. They cannot physically attack. He has to use the Reaver instead to attack. Corsair on the side, killing some overlords. Once again, JH is supply stuck. He put the Corsairs there on the sides, on patrol, just to make sure that anything that leaves the base gets attacked by Corsairs. But as a result, the, whenever it attacks an overlord, the overlord just starts wandering off, and there's a chance the Corsair on patrol gets pulled into spores. And that happened right there. I think it's more useful to place like four Corsairs on the sides and hold position so that they don't move. But they do keep the overlords away from the sides. Double Reaver there in the front there, dealing damage, but walking closer, bugging out, not... Ooh, the coding there is not really helping Minchel out there, but he manages to gather his Reavers back and prevent disaster for now. He's gonna try to barge through the choke there, still no Observer. I do think the Observer is on the way now, though he did finish the Observatory, but there it is, there's the Observer. More Reavers are on the way here as well, more Corsairs are still spawning, one Corsair going into the base doing some scouting, more Hylas have finished. So he went to Spire just to get Scorches, he's not going for Mutalisks whatsoever. And I think he moved away from Mutalisks because he saw the Corsairs, but also because he's probably expecting Dragoons, and Dragoons are indeed on the way. Not from these gateways though, but from the gateways here back at home, Storm there is also I think finished. Level 2 attack also already on the way, so very quick level 1 attack there from Mitchell. And now the Observer arrives on the scene, and the Lurkers, which were very expensive to build, are not really seeing any use whatsoever. Observer and the Reavers doing exactly as expected and just very easily tearing through those Sunkens and tr through those Lurkers. I really think JH made a small mistake there in determining what he was going to do by going for the very quick lair because now his hatcheries are somewhat behind on schedule. He could have already had 10 or 11 finished hatcheries if he stuck on a lair if he stuck on a hatchery for longer, it went for a later and slower Hylas then, I mean a later lair, and a slower Lurker upgrade. And he would have had a lot of Hydras already finished up, ready to go for a surround attack here on the Reavers and keep them out. But instead he's going for a risk all Hydras drop. But I think, I think, 
it's not going to work here because there's a lot of uh, cannons here already back at home and more cannons are being added on and a frontal attack is happening right here right now and this is a very very big frontal attack a lot of reapers are over cocoons all of zealous and that's getting up to the jh is trying to micro his hydras as best as he can but J mitchell is not over committing he's pulling all of his units back to the reavers and putting the hydras in a very dangerous position because now the reavers are protected and whenever the hydra comes close to the reavers or the zealous or the goons the reavers take them down or the zealous can go in for the attack this is a very well coordinated and micro attack here from mitchell preventing as much damage as he can to his units and with a single easy attack and a giant miscalculation a giant misprediction from jh mitchell takes home this win within only 10 minutes and very little effort all it took was a single very well coordinated attack that included everything that he needed. He had Dragoons for Mulesks, he had Reavers for Hydras, and Zealous just to be damn scary to tank the shit, to tank damage. The drop, the Old Lord Lurker drop, never even arrived on location. Never even had a chance to kill those probes. Minchel has a really good build order here. I really like this build order. But I also believe that JH slightly miscalculated what he was doing. So that gives us the first win for Minchil. And that means that there's still a chance for him to make a majestic comeback here. To still win this series, this best of five. There's still a chance. But he is, you know, playing from behind. He has to win two more games in order to take home the title and the, the, the trophy. In order to call himself the victor of this best of five between Mitchell and JH. So game number two. We have changed races. We've got Mitchell on the Zerg here on the bottom middle of the map. On the orange Zerg and we've got on the Protoss JH here on the blue. The blue color on the middle left of the map. JH is doing what I said a lot of Protoss players, uh, Zerg players do. And that is scouting the middle with the Overlord just to see if there are gateways on the middle he doesn't see any gateways there so he, i think he's gonna try to play it a little bit safe the pylon there in the middle gets scouted he knows he's there looks like jh is going for a cheeky cannon attack there in the front it's very cheeky very difficult to deal with because the cannon takes a lot of drones to kill and at the same time we've got probes and a zealot on the way to disrupt even further so Minchel is losing a lot of minerals here, and he even decided not to add on a hatcher in the back to save up money, so he can afford the sunken tree in the front. Using his drones to micro against the probe, but who is winning this exchange? I'm not too sure. Keep the drones there alive, running the drones back home. So the are on the way as well. This is pretty much an all. This is a great rush attempt here from JH, but I think the rush is not going to work out because both sunkens are very close to finishing, which means that most likely we're gonna see. JH lose the cannons here and the pylon because the sunken in the back is finished and more Zerkers are on the way ready to go for the cannons are in the back completely ignoring the zealous more zealous are coming from the base and during the fight there but with support of that one sunken the Zerkings are gonna come out on top for sure now this all does come at the cost that Minchel doesn't have a third hatchery back at home yet but at least he prevented the rush and this rush is very expensive for JH very expensive. He also lost, I think, a total of four probes there to the rush, which I think is even more drones than Mitchell himself lost in the process. Now, JH is of course a little bit ahead with his probe count, which is natural. And it's gonna take a while for Mitchell to catch up, because his second or third hatchery in the back has only just now started. But at least he prevented taking serious damage from that rush attempt by JH. Zerkings are going all around the middle to get back into that base. He does have free fire on that single Nexus there, so he can try to go for something. Overlord there, flying back and forth. Zerkings are trying to draw in the Zealots into the Sunkens and make JH lose some Sunkens. He has to put them on hold position. So the Zerkings there arriving on the scene doing some scouting. He sees the Cyber Core, sees the Gaster in the back and sees the second Nexus being added on as well. So he knows what to expect. He knows that JH is forsaking his early game pressure in favor of getting a bigger economy. And now Minchel knows he can pretty much do the exact same, but he cannot take too much liberty because he is going to be facing a robotic facility somewhat early on. So I'm really curious to see what is Minchel going to do here. Also I have to change their races there at the bottom 
side, I forgot to change their races, so let's just do that real quick. And there, all done. So Pylon's coming down on the middle, probably planning on building a containment all around Minchul's base with cannons. And likely a couple of robotics facilities as well on the middle just to shorten the distance for a reaver push. So the reavers can spawn right here and walk just this little distance. Start attacking the sunken instead of having to send them all the way into the middle with a shuttle from back home. There is the first robo. Now 22 probes and 16 drones here for Minchul. Second hatchery is finished, we've got, well, third hatchery is finished, we've got two more hatchers on the way on the sides, and a very early Hylus den on only 19 drones in total. It's also still on the hatchery, but that's completely fine because Hylusks are diverse. You don't really need a very super early lair. If you are very confident in your ability to mass produce Hydras and to control them to great effectiveness. Another Zerkling there gets through, he spotted the middle, he scouted the robotics, also got back into the base and is going to scout the base once again. And he's going to look for a Citadel of Adun and a Templar's Archive, but he finds neither of the two. So he knows that it's going to be a Reaver push here in the front. Got three Robos there coming down in the front. We've got High Level Speed there being started in the back. Still on four Hatchers in the back, one almost finished. Dragoon there on the side, denying vision, but he sees it. He sees it's there. So he knows to keep his overlord away from this hillside, or at least prevent it from going past the hill. So JH is playing this one slow. He's playing this one slow and focusing on economy. And then of course we've got the shuttle coming in to pick up four zealots and shuttle them into Minchul's base and hopefully do, do some distracting there in the back with those four zealots. Those four zealots can mildly distract. Maybe he's going to shuttle in a total of eight. He's moving all the way to the side here. Maybe he's moving to this portion right here. To shuttle them over. There he is. He's going to shuttle them over. Putting four of them there in the base. This is happening outside of the vision that, that Minchil has. No, it's happening inside the vision. So Minchil can actually respond to this one quite easily and start damaging those zealots. The zealots will not really do all that much because there's before all of them had already unloaded on the scene, they were already getting attacked, so not much happened there. The Zealots were pretty much thrown away, but it's worth the gamble. Sometimes you can get in there before there are sufficient Hydras to fight against your Zealots, and you can, you know, kill some Hydras and keep the total number of Hydras capable of defending against Shuttle Drops a little bit lower than if you hadn't done that. And sometimes when you get enough zealots into the Zerg base, you can even start attacking the drones. And that is a nightmare and a finisher for most Zergs because they get slowed down so much by getting their drones attacked and losing their drones that the follow-up drop attack, because the shuttle is still alive and the Reavers are on the way, the follow-up drop attack can really deal significant amounts of damage to anything there in the base. Because Reavers can get micro with a shuttle and they can kill a lot of stuff and they can even go for the drones if they are greedy. Corsair there finished by JH. So only like single can there back at home. Weapon attack there level 1 almost finished. Weapon level attack for ground and air almost finished actually. I misspoke that one pretty badly. So the goons are being added on into the middle just in case he needs those dragoons against overlords or mulisks. But no mulisks are on the way. He does have the lair finished but no spire is there yet. Also getting... He's got, uh, I think, high disk range finished. Overward speed there on the way. Got Burrow on the way as well. And there's an Evo Chamber with level 1 weapon attack for Hydras being researched as well. We've got 3 Reavers on the middle and 3 more on the way. Got Scarab damage there on the way as well because Scarab damage just does so much in making the push succeed. I didn't see if he got his shuttle speed as well. I don't see the shuttle anywhere actually. The shuttle is... I, of course, he went for the drop here on the side just earlier, and he sniped that one. So that's why there's no shuttle at the moment. The front of push is progressing, slowly but surely. Mostly focused on building everything that he needs to completely explode past the 10 minute mark, once he has enough Reavers and enough units to go for the definitive push. Though he's mostly going for more Corsairs to abuse and harass. I don't see a play beacon, so it's not going to be a disruption web play, it's going to be Corsairs with all Corsairs to abuse Overlords and to stop and prevent Mutalisks from killing 
the Reavers. But I think that Minchul is mostly going to be going for Mass Hydra. He's on 47 drones now, still a little bit behind on schedule because he keeps losing overlords on the sides, keeps having to make new ones. It's mostly just annoying. It slows down a little bit, but it's not really damage that's all that bad. I'm personally not a fan of these Corsairs, and because I'm seeing these Corsairs trying to harass on the side against speed overlords, I'm predicting that JH is going to be in for a long game here. A game that might not be pleasant. There's a lot of Reavers in the front though, a lot of Reavers, and sometimes when you have a lot of Reavers pushing through the front, the Hydralisks that the Zerg massed up and accumulated won't always do all that much damage, and it's all about whether the Scarabs hit the correct Hydras to kill as many of them with single shots as they can. But sometimes the Scarabs go for the same target, and the Reavers kind of go down pretty quick without killing all that many Hydralisks. It's kind of random, it's completely random, unless you are a boss and you can individually target fire all your Reavers to shoot on specific Hydralisks, but that's so highly intensive that I don't think JH is going to do that one. I've never really seen anyone do that specifically though. To target fire specifically with their Reavers on specific Hydras to get as many kills as they can. Yet the Corsairs still being annoying there on the sides, but not really doing much. Not really doing much. Honestly, not doing much. Minchel has not lost side vision whatsoever. There's still a lot of vision there on the sides. We've got probes there going to the sides, throwing down pylons for more vision. JH now in 79 total probes. He's pretty rich. Got a lot of gas coming in as well. And there's the fleet beacon. Getting disruption web as well. So he's definitely. I was wrong earlier. He's definitely going for the disruption web reaper play. It's always a lot of fun to see. It's, it looks really strong. Although it's pretty difficult to pull off as well. And against a player like Minchel, who has very high APM and very good control of his Hydras, I'm not sure if it's going to work. But it would be great if it did. But I'm not sure. I'm a little bit doubtful. But one thing is for sure, it's going to be hype to see those disruption webs coming down. A lot of lurkers are in the back to protect his drones, a lot of them. Because I think, because he saw all the Reavers, which are currently not really pushing through the front, because Reavers have a lot of trouble shooting around the corner to hit those Sunkens. It pretty much stops the Reaver push. I wouldn't say completely, but it makes it pretty difficult to pull off. Because when you try to attack the Sunkens around the corner, the Reavers crawl up all the way into the front and take Sunken damage. Now that's not great, that's not great. Not what you want. That's why he's transitioning over into a mass Reaver drop of 6 shuttles, 7 shuttles finished up there for I think a total of 12 Reavers to be picked up. This is going to be a massive bloody drop. But a lot of the Corsairs are going down. I don't think JH has a lot of Corsairs with enough energy to use a Disruption Web. The disruption Web of course is going to be coming down on the Hydras to stop them from attacking the Reavers. And the Reavers will then of course take down the Hydras while they are incapable of attacking. This is basically, in my opinion, a giant gamble that deviates from the consistent frontal push approach. But this gamble, if it succeeds, it's going to be an instant win. Well, any of these mass reef drops can be an instant win. Or they can just drag on and turn it into a very slow game. He's trying to get in over the bottom side there, but so many Hybridists are there. Minchel is really aware. Great awareness here. He knows exactly what's going on. Prevents the reaver drop. And returns back at home for now. Gonna fly all the way around, maybe back to the front. He's gonna try and look for a different angle to fly in from. And considering he's killing a lot of overlords here on the right side, it's definitely going to be on the right side. Looks like Minchil is somewhat aware that this is an option that JH has and starts. Ooh, he starts moving units to the right side, but not to the right, to the right side of the right side. Or the correct area. Lands there, but the Reavers are clipping into each other. A lot of Hydras are coming in for the surround there. No course as for disruption. Webs course are focused on the Overlords on the side. And it looks like the Reavers are not really getting the results that they intended. But that is, I think, about 30 or so. I oh, there are the disruption Webs. The disruption Webs are coming in a little bit late, though. Just a little bit late. All the Reavers have died. And I think he did kill about 40 Hydras. But that is not really the result he was looking for. Now he does have more Reavers finishing up on the middle, although... Not fast enough. Not fast enough. He has to throw in that follow-up drop as fast as he possibly can before all the Hylodists are finished rebuilding. 
Now, Minchol did lose, I think, about five overlords here on the side to the Corsair. So, once again, he is looking at a supply block. He's not really able to, well, max out again, because he has to wait for the overlord to finish. To hate here slowing down a little bit, adding on even more robos on the middle, just to ensure that he can keep spamming out Reavers. Adding on more gas back at home as well. A lot of starboards. Almost no gateways whatsoever. Throws away a Dragoon to open up supply space. Idols are gonna try to kill some of the Reavers on the middle, but mostly just paying for it with their lives. I don't think a si All right, a single one did go down, but not a giant big result. Corsairs on the side, looking to kill Overlords. Mitchell is honestly looking pretty fine here. He's looking pretty fine. He's got 66 drones, pretty rich. He's got a lot of gas going in as well as I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, another 5, 10, year 3, another 3. So about 16, 17, 17 hatcheries indeed. Got all the tech that he needs. This is Evo Chambers, the Fighter Mount, Greater Spire here on the way, a second Spire for more upgrades also on the way. Got two queens as well, four and snares. Oh, Reaver Drop comes in there. The... Oh, it worked. It almost worked. Reavers are unloading, but it's unloading right on top of Sunkens and on top of Lurkers. Scarab chasing the drones, but the drones there are staying alive, running away just in time. More Lurkers are shooting on the Reavers. One more shot might go off, but no, all the drones there stay alive. And that is pretty much a completely failed Shuttle Drop Mass Reaver attempt. Still chasing the drones. There might still be something in there, but I think they... Oh, there's still something in there. He shoots on the... Extractor. Alright, he shoots on the Extractor. Sometimes the Reaver shoots before you can have it target something. It's quite difficult sometimes. That's why Templars are so beloved. Because it's easier to just storm on something and not get stuck in the Reaver shooting and reloading animation. But yeah, the game is starting to look pretty bad here for Mitchell. Or for JH, it's starting to look pretty good for Mitchell. If he can keep defending those mass reaver drops in a similar fashion, he's gonna have a good time. JH is focused very heavily on building cannons everywhere on the side. He's going for maximum containment vessel approach. Minchel is like a nuclear bomb, and JH is trying to contain it like the Russians contained Chernobyl. A lot of reavers on the middle, but also waiting for upgrades to finish. What upgrades does he have at the moment? Level 1 shield, level 1 armor, level 1 attack. I don't see any gateway units that actually can attack. It's all it's just Templars everywhere. So the Reavers are getting loaded up. Ready to go for another try. Wait, there's a Dragoon. Yeah, level 1, 1, 1 on a Dragoon. The air should be on what's the Corsair? I cannot find a Corsair. All the Corsairs are here. Level 2, 1, 2. Mitchell is currently on level 1-2. He's got Guardians in the back as well. Guardians are absolutely amazing against Reavers getting dropped into your base. And there it comes. Oh, one shuttle trying to sneak through with a Templar inside. The Templar goes down to the Lurker pretty much instantly. The Reavers also have gone down pretty much instantly. The Ensnare there, making sure the shuttles all go down as well. Making it a longer process here for JH to fly in that follow-up reaver drop, although a follow-up reaver drop wouldn't be doing all that much because there's a lot of units here in the base for Mitchell to defend. A lot of units to defend. Adding on a couple more layers. Not sure why, but more layers is cute, it's nice. Yeah, JH has built himself a really good containment. But he's also playing against a really good turtle zerg, and the turtle zerg is going to be a ninja very soon and break out or so I hope. Breaking out shouldn't be that difficult because there's not a lot of Templars to prune about. He's mostly investing everything into Reavers and Shuttles and I only count a very small amount of Templars. There are some Corsairs on the side that are going to try to kill the Guardians. But there's Spores and there's Hydras. Oh, they're on the side. Reavers being dropped into the base. Cannons are assisting as well. Reavers are killing a lot of the Hydras and the Guardians have gone down as well. So this one might actually deal a significant amount of damage. Also, the shuttles have all been saved and secured and sent back into the middle. He clears out about 30 supply. New Hydras are in production. 41 Hydras in production. He killed about 
Wow, if 41 Hydras are in production, it means he killed about 70 supply in total and more Reavers getting flown in, ready to support their Reaver brothers to kill more Hydras, but they are still making Scarabs. Slowly but surely, taking down the Hydras with this follow-up drop attempt here. Not a great success, as the Reavers are a little bit slow with the Scarab production and not really firing no non-stop, not consecutively firing their Scarabs non-stop. So Mincho, pretty much again in the process of rebuilding his entire mass. Mincho, or JH, I mean JH, not Mincho, JH, is looking to finally deal some damage with the mass reaver drop, but he hasn't really managed to do any serious damage. No economic loss for Mincho, no structural loss for Mincho, it's mostly just units going down. And given the fact that there's almost no gateway units and no gateways for JH, he's pretty much stuck with this method of attack for now. If he had a lot of gateways, he could switch over into gateway units and try to break through the front. We have some defilers into the mix now as well for Mitchell. More Mulis are spawning for more Guardians. Lurkers are still there. Very, very, very difficult to play against. Corsairs are now entering the mix as well. Reavers are loading on the bottom corner, but there's no Observer. There's the Observer. Observer comes in. Now the Lurkers can go down. All the units coming in from around, getting a spread out on the Reavers. The Reavers are getting plagued as well. well. No, not a plague. The plague isn't there yet. So the Reavers go down within the blink of an eye. Really, really easily defended once again. With more Reavers already spawning on the middle. So it means that... JH cannot yet push out with Hydras. He cannot yet move out and free himself from this prison. Another Reaver drop there appears to be in the making. But is it going to work? That is the big question because Minchil, as I said before, is pretty, pretty damn strong. Has a lot of supports, spores on the side as well. Another drop there coming in on the exact same corner as before. Should be about well, it's only about six Reavers, actually. Not as many as I was expecting. Should be an easy fix. Should be an easy kill, easy pickup for Minchul there. The Reavers go down. The Plague definitely helped. Now the Guardians are moving into the side, but they're returning back home just to save up a little bit longer because he needs energy for more Plagues. A lot of Corsairs there getting taken by the Plague. Massive hit there. Means they're going to be very easy to take down very soon as well. More Reavers are looking to fly in there with the shuttles. He's going to sacrifice the Corsairs just to finish off the Guardians to make sure that the Reavers don't have opposition from the air. Finds a nice little spot there in the base to drop and unload the Reavers. But mass units already surrounding the Reavers. Going to take them down within the blink of an eye. And yes, they do indeed go down in the blink of an eye. Great surround there from Minchil. This game is looking better and better for our Zerg player. And JH is not really achieving much. He's trying, but not achieving much. I really think switching back to the conventional approach of trying to break through the front might yield him more fruit. And I think he's going to try to do it. I think he's going to try to switch over into more gateway units and forsake his current approach. Already building more gateways on the middle because he definitely needs them. He pretty much has only robotic facilities and stargates. Another reaver drop here, being prepared, ready to fly in from the side. Guardian still back at home, here near the hive. Four hives, actually, four of them in total. A lot of sports are on the side. The queen as well. Horses are coming in to support the shuttles to help them fly in and assist them to reach destination. Comes in. Horses are distracting. There's a plague on the shuttles, but there's nothing to kill the shuttles. It's gonna elope there on top of the lurkers, and the lurkers are gonna take them down very easily. Scarab coming down on the drones, kills one side, but that's pretty much nothing at all because most drones are already away from home. Already pulled the safety. And once again, a massive failure there from JH doesn't get any results whatsoever. And so he goes back to the frontal push, but as I said before, the sunguns around the corner are really, really strong against Reavers as they are tripping out about trying to hit the sunkers but getting closer quality into sunken range and going down without really killing all that much. Massive loss there for JH, losing all those reavers for pretty much only three sunkens. Also JH Mitchell there has great use of the defiler with the plague, always has a couple of circling next to the defiler to make sure it has 150 energy at least. 
or a plague. This is going to be difficult to break out from. A lot of Reavers are in the front. Once again, a couple of them getting loaded up into shuttles to go for another cheeky Reaver drop while he's at the same time pushing through the front. Another plague there on the Reavers. Great job. Oh, the Scarab hits the Defiler there at the last possible second. A lot of Corsairs here. Now, Corsairs are great, but also not great. They are absolutely epic in annoying enemies and stopping Guardians as well. But once the Zerg has the Varus, the Corsairs don't do that much. Also, Corsairs have zero offensive power if you don't use it in conjunction with great disruption web use. Alone, they kind of only are great at defending. That's something you can see here. They're great at defending, but kind of sucky at attacking, as the Devourer debuff completely nullifies the damage of the Corsairs and makes them very easy to kill. It's like cutting through butter. Devourers are the true natural counter to air units. So yeah, now he's gonna try to break out. The Guardians are very slowly pushing forward. More Corsairs are arriving on the scene, but the Devourers in the back are gonna assist them very soon. The Hydras are pretty much dying to the storm. This is pretty much sending your units into the meat grinder. A lot of cannons on the middle, a lot of reeves on the middle. Breaking out is gonna be difficult. But Mitchell, never gonna give up. He's gonna keep trying. He's gonna have to make some new defilers as well. Force on plagues here on the cannons. I think that plagues on cannons are absolutely essential and absolutely broken in terms of how strong it is. Plagues on this many cannons would make them so easy to kill. It really saves you a lot of time. Let's just do a little math. It's half of the HP. The HP goes down to zero. So you kill half the cannon with a play. Same for Corsairs, it's a little bit below half. Comes in from the sides, Spores are assisting. Guardians are moving out to attack. He's gonna unload there right on top of the lurks once again. No, he's gonna unload right above the hive. Nowhere for those drones to go except back home. Get some shots on the hive, but there, but the lurkers and the guardians and the hydras kill the reavers within less than a blink of an eye. So guardians on the sides are slowly killing the containment vessel. Minchel is going nuclear and he's gonna break out and lay waste to everything that JH has built up until now. More Corsairs are on the way but he needs a gateway units, he needs Dragoons, he needs Dragoons, Zealots and Templars. Not Corsairs, Corsairs have lost their use, but he's still making a lot of them. But they honestly have lost their use. He's sticking to his guns, but sticking to his guns might not be the right approach. More Templars are being added in. Guardians not that great against Templars, getting stormed down slowly but surely, losing HP. The Reavers are there just to make sure that they can keep killing every single ground unit that enters the middle. Corsairs coming in, Corsairs getting debuffed, Corsairs getting attacked by the Hydras as well. And pretty much, yeah, the courses have completely lost their effectiveness. Drop there, coming in, gotta go for the drones. A little bit late though, but this one is definitely gonna hit for sure. Arrives on the scene, drones are running away, scarabs are exploding, and finally he kills about 20 of them. About 20 drones? Uh, that's, 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 that's not important. Not important at all. A lot of Reavers on the middle, a lot of air on the middle as well, and nothing to kill the air except Corsairs that are getting attacked by the Varus and getting debuffed and getting shrunk and getting easily killed. Now the Guardians are gonna push through, and the one thing that Min JH needs, which is Dragoons, Dragoons would really be awesome right here. He doesn't have Dragoons, he has Corsairs dancing back and forth with the Corsairs trying to make stuff happen. The Reavers are doing a great job of killing Hydras, but the Hydras are mostly staying below and beneath the Guardians so that they can attack the Corsairs when the Corsairs get a little too close. The Devourer is also there in the back on hold position. There is a great disruption up there on the Hydras, just to make sure you can kill the Guardians, but more Guardians are coming out from the base, more Hydras as well. Looks like Minchel is not making new drones, he's just investing all of his supply space into more units. Because he has quite a bank to sit on, quite a bank to use, he's quite safe for now, and he can afford to have a lesser amount of drones mining minerals. And yeah, it looks like JH is losing the middle here. He's losing the middle and finally, slowly but surely, he really is pushing through. The Hydras are still there to protect the Guardians. He's dodging the storms even. This is great play for Minchel here. Looks like 
the gateway units are finally on the way, but considering his gateway count is still so low, he's way too late. He's running behind on the facts. More Corsairs coming into the middle, but there's a plague and a, a, and a snare and the Valor debuff on the Corsairs. Corsairs are so useless at the moment. Look at them flying back and forth, tickling the Guardians with their debuff, tickling and taking massive amounts of damage from everything. Because the debuffs, I have said it so many times before, the Acid Spores are ridiculously strong against Corsairs. And now the game is looking very, very scary. More Corsairs coming in to try and save today, but there's so many Hydras on the low ground as well. Reavers are still spawning, but all the Robotics are going down. He's trying to put more gateways back at home as fast as he can, but it might be a little bit too late. He only has... Well, this is quite a good amount of gateways. But there's already so many units on the middle. This is a bloody, bloody fight. The Dragoons are finally helping out a little bit, but they are not fully upgraded. They have level 2 weapon attack against level 3, 3 Hydras. The Hydras are fully maxed out on upgrades, and the Dragoons are not. Templar there spawning in the back as well, gonna storm on something as well, but it might be a little bit too late. This is like trying to plump the water out of a sinking boat, but the boat is already completely submerged in water. Completely submerged in the ocean. Yeah, this is over. Just completely swarming the middle with that mass Hydra attack. Surgeons in the mix as well. Absolutely bloody stuff there. The gateways in the back. Gateways back at home have all finished, but it's too late because the enemy units are already entering the base. Marching in there, storming, getting absolutely on top of everything, tearing through those stargates, which are completely useless in this situation. Completely useless. He's making more Corsairs, but there's nothing to attack in the air. At most, he can do nothing at all except call the GG. And that is win number two there for Mitchell in this very, very pretty, beautifully long game here from these two players. A thumbnail there as well. Yeah, so let's move on to game number five and update the score chart. This Minchil is now back in contention. Minchil can make the comeback and still win this best of five between these two players as the score is now tied up at 2-2. And we're going to the final game between these two. And of course, the final game is going to be Protoss against Protoss, because what is a manlier way of ending a game than some manly fist fighting on equal footing with the same race to determine who is the king of the day? Who is the king of today? Is it going to be JH here on the brown Protoss under the name BS Minchel, or is it going to be Minchel on the name Barcode as Barcode? On the top middle here as the white Protoss. This is going to be the final match to determine, as the standing is at two wins for both. The question is, can Minchel ride the momentum from his two previous wins to win this? Or is it going to be JH? Now I do think that Minchel is one of the very best Protoss vs Protoss players, but JH himself is also pretty darn good at PvP. He has played a lot of PvP over the years. And I know, because I have his entire autosave file and I've seen how many PvP are in those autosave files. It's a lot of PvP. A lot. Like, no kidding, it is a lot of PvP. I wish I had Minchil's autosave file as well, so I could see what he was doing, what he's playing, and so I could have access to all of his matches. But sadly, he's not interested in sharing those because he doesn't know any English, so I can't communicate a deal with him, basically. So yeah, we are looking at a three gateway opening after a Nexus here from JH. Well, allow me to correct myself, a four gateway opening there. Against a two gateway opening and two gas there for Minchel, who's going for more tech. Cybercore, they're already on the way, no Cybercore on the way there. Wait, that's a Cybercore. Right, so one gas, Cybercore. Two gas. Oh, he's mimicking what JH is doing. So he's going to try to mimic his opponent, although he's on two gas. There's a two probe difference because JH's Nexus finished a little bit earlier. Well, now they're on the same amount. The gateways 
H is going to be a little bit ahead in total unit count because his gateway is finished a little bit earlier. And Mitchell is going to have to play catch up for a small amount of time. Zelda there trying to do some scouting once again. He might have seen the robotic facility, he might not have seen it either. We got a Citadel coming in for Mitchell, not a robotics. He's got Dragoon range coming in as well. I'm wondering if he's going to go for Dark Templars with Dragoons. I have no idea. No idea to be honest. I'll be completely honest. No idea. I do know that most likely we're going to be seeing a Reaver Shuttle from JH for a drop attempt. But there's also the chance that he's going for detection against Dark Templars. A lot of 8 gateways there for Mitchell. He's definitely going for a gateway mass. Dark Templars and Dragoons, or maybe Zealots with Zealot Speed. With level 1 attacker on the way, no Zealot Speed has started yet. So maybe he's going to delay that one for later into the game. The hate here definitely going for a drop. Robotic facility are on the way on the robotic support bay on the way there on the bottom side. Shuttle also already on the way. Dark Templars queued up there for Minchil, four of them in total. That's a lot of Dark Templars. And we don't have detection yet for JH. No observatory either. So it looks like JH does not yet know the Dark Templars are on the way. We might build a single candidate in the front just for detection purposes, because that is the rule in PvP in the Korean scene. You can only make a single cannon in your choke. You cannot build cannons on the middle. That is out of order. That is out of order. So only one cannon in the choke, no cannons on the middle. That is the rule, and both players are abiding by that rule. And honestly, it does make for some very exciting PvP action. No turtling, no camping, no mass cannons everywhere on the map. Minjil also going for a support robotics facility there. The Dark Templars are arriving on the scene just in time to kill the detection. Great timing there from him. Now attacking the units are on the middle, tries to block them to get as much damage on as he can. Zealots and Dragoons are running back to the one single cannon there. Protecting the cannon that's coming up here, so now detection there serves its purpose. He does have a observatory on the way. Shuttle there flying across the map. Dragoons already going out to intercept because he knows it's coming. The Dragoons though are not really on the correct location. Zealots are in the front. One cannon back at home, pulling the Dragoons back at home now because he saw that the shuttle is not coming from this direction. Stuff here at home is still dying for JH. Mitchell getting a little bit of use out of those Dark Templars. He arrives just in time to intercept because the shuttle flew over the pylon so he knows it was coming in. Beautiful job, beautiful done, beautifully done. Instead of keeping them here, he pulls them back at home, where they can still be of use. He was hoping the shuttle would fly over here, but it didn't. So the pylon side vision there are really working out great for Minchel. Down to a lot of 12 gateways, that's a lot of gateways, a lot of units can be spawning soon. Observatory also on the way. No storm yet, no high tempos either, he's mostly going for a pure mass approach. And JH, knowing that Minchel is going for a pure mass approach, is also adjusting his bull order by postponing his... Oh, he's got double citadel on the way here. Double citadel. Oh no. Yeah, he's postponing his storm drop by a little bit to get more gateway units so he can match and fight Minchel's army. Minchel has a 22 supply lead at the moment, so he does have a little bit of leverage over JH. But JH does have that reaver there in the back, which can help him support this defense. More Dragoons are spawning at the same time for JH as well. He's spreading out and creating a circle around this choke point. Minchil is going to have a tough time breaking through, because his units are confined to a smaller space than JH's units are here in the back. The Zealots also do a great job tanking most of the damage so the Dragoons can keep firing on the enemy Dragoons. The Reaver there in the back is going to start assisting soon as well, and yet this is looking to be going JH's way, as Minchil cannot break through. The advantage of geography, it's difficult to break through a small area if you are trying to break into a big, big area where a lot of units can fire at the same time. 
basically the entire strategy that the Spartans used against the Persians. You know what they said, this is Sparta. It looks like JH is definitely showing us some Spartan play here. Love one attack there as finished. We got love one attack there for JH as well. Shuttle there arriving to pick up that reaver to go for another drop attempt, but more vision coming down on the sides there for Minchel. It's gonna have an easy time seeing those shuttle drops fly in. Once again, frontal attack happening there. This time there's not a lot of units there for JH in the front to defend. All units are screwed about the base to the sides to intercept shuttle drops, but no shuttle drops are on the way from Minchel. It's just a mass frontal attack. Though he's barging in, he's barging into that great surround there that JH has. Natural advantage of location. The Dragoons there not achieving all that much, mostly just losing Dragoons, but more Dragoons there and Zealots coming in from the back there to help and assist, but a couple of cannons there on the sides are really helping him defend. Dragoons, this is a great defense there from the hate. this game looks to be going about even for now, and it might go on even a little bit longer than the usual Protoss against Protoss matches, because this looks to be very difficult to break through. He's got vision on the sides with the observers. We have vision on the sides here with pylons. We've got a lot of cannons in the back as well, and dragoons to intercept shuttles as well. More gateways being added on there just to keep making sure he can keep making an army. No shuttle drops from Minchel yet, although he is preparing them. He is preparing them for sure. Because we've got two shuttles there on the way. We've got Templar energy. Well, no, that's hallucination. He already has storm upgrade finished. Templars are queued up somewhere as well. Three Templars here. So yeah, he's starting to realize he cannot do this with just making mass army. He needs shuttle drops to make this work. A little shuttle drop there on the way, but the probe there spots it out. And the fly over those pylons. Dragoons are already in position to snipe it. He knows it's coming. Shuttle comes in. Dragoons ready to snipe and fire. The Templar unloads, but the Templar is too far away to storm on the probe. Storms on nothing whatsoever. He tried. He tried. Zealous some scouting. Zealous being thrown away for more supply because he's supply blocked by maximum supply. The space looks a little bit messy compared to Minchul, but it serves its purpose. Cat is on the side for protection. The game is looking exactly as you would expect if both players do the exact same build and have even trades, even blows, even situations, even losses and even gains. Minjil has 67 probes, so that might be something that we have to look out for. He's got 67 probes against 79. 79 gives Minjil, uh, gives JH more money, for sure. Well, get spotted there by the Observer. Dragoons are ready to snipe. He turns around. There's only three Dragoons there, though, to snipe. Well, this one's going to arrive on the scene. This one's going to go all the way. Tempos are unloading. Tempos are not storming because he doesn't have Storm. Alright, so he didn't have Storm after all. That was pretty much the only only answer to the Templars on storming while having energy. Drop comes in, Drop got sniped. But that's unfortunate for Minchul because he really had a chance to win the game right here, right there with those two Templars. He could have stormed everything to death. But of course, not having storm upgrade finished. Well, it's your own mistake. And now we've got a massive counterattack here in the making on the scene, ready to go out and into the base here. Minchul does not have a lot of units finished in the choke point, but he does have, as I said before, that natural advantage of this choke point, where he can put his units in a circle around the choke point, where only a small amount of units from JH can attack. So yeah, he pulls back, he knows he can't do it, he cannot do it yet. Minchul, though, on the other hand, is going for an attack there on the middle, trying to catch these units off guard. It's a pretty good spread there with his units, moves into the middle, JH is scrambling back to his own base. He knows he has to leave that middle to not lose too many units. And basically both players are just fighting within their own comfort zones. Whenever Minchel gets attacked, he pulls back to his choke. When JH gets attacked, he pulls back to his choke and defends from the natural advantage of the choke point. Drop there, flying across the map there, ready to go in. But of course it will get spotted out. But this time around, the units that Minchel sent into JH's base all get taken down rather quick, and he's once again forced to retreat, but this time he retreats into his own bigger area. Now JH is forced to fight into this choke point, and now Minchel can use this larger area to spread his units out. Drop comes in there, probes are running away just in time, Dragoons are running back home, trying to snipe the Templars and the Shuttles, but the probes are already gone. 
So he storms on some probes that are mining gas, but only gets two probe kills. It's pretty much nothing at all. Also, the fight here is really dragging on because those goons here are fighting in that choke point. Minchil is eventually, though, losing that fight here. But he's got units spawning at home, and he's got so many gateways. I count 12, 18, another 6 there for a total of 24. And I think JH has about a similar amount. So both players are absolute macro monsters in this game. And both players have a lot of restraint and control to not overcommit to bad situations. Both players are playing it safe. They're waiting for an advantage to build. They're waiting for a storm to hit. And once the storm hits, they're going to put on the pressure like never before. Drop here on the top side. Something to look out for. Goon's going for the attack, but once again, oh, he doesn't have an observer. He doesn't have an observer. Drop there goes in before it gets, oh, he gets taken down before he could even send it in. Smart move there for Minchel to pull some Dragoons out of his base. Now that our Templars here on the middle, alongside the Zealots, are really doing a number on these Dragoons because it looks like JH forgot an observer. Well, he's got a drop there on the way as well, though, but he gets spotted out there by Dragoons. He knows it's coming in. He knows to snipe it, and he knows the shuttle is going to be taken down. So JH turns around and he's going to wait for a little while to strike. He's going to wait for Minchel to make a mistake and go in when he sees he has the opportunity. Dragoons finally made it into, <coughs> into his base here though. And Minchel here is suffering from low minerals because he doesn't have that many probes. He's got 61 probes. His income is somewhat small. Shuttle gets sniped once again. Setting out units to the sides because JH is killing pylons on the side to deny vision over the map. And denying vision is important as I've said many, 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 many times before. So yeah, JH now is making an observer to deal with those Dark Templars. Also still making a mass amount of units to once again go out for the attack to try and break into Minchil's base. Minchil is doing pretty fine. He's got a lot of shuttles there filled up with units and courses in the mix as well. He's going to try to go out and go in and do some punching onto the Nexus here for sure in the back. Just using his entire mass. But at the same time, we got a mass attack there coming in from JH who's planning to break through. He's planning to keep the pressure up on his opponent. Though he's going for those side pylons first. He's not going for the attack because of course he doesn't know that a mass drop is on the way there. All the way to the back side there. Probes are running to safety. Units are unloading, Reavers are there on the scene, he's storming on the Reavers, the Reavers are going to shoot on the Nexus, gets a lot of damage out on the Nexus, the Nexus might go down. One more shot, one more shot, 10 HP! Oh, that's so close, that's so close. But at least we now can tell for sure that the Nexus is definitely going to get taken down. But first, Minchel has to deal with these gateway units that are entering his base, though he's buying time with the Dark Templars there, and there's no support from an Observer, because he forgot to bring the Observer. JH is making some mistakes, and now he cannot capitalize on that attack, because the Dark Templars are keeping his gateway units away from Minchel's base. Also, do note that JH lost about 30 of his probes to that mass reaver drop. So finally, Minchel is the ver first player to get actual results. Now, of course, we can't say he got real big results until he kills that Nexus, because killing that Nexus is going to be the turning point. But until he kills that one, the game is still about even. Though JH is not replacing his probes, he's not replacing his probes, he's going for a gambit gamble play here. He's gambling on the fact that his gateway mass army will be bigger than Mitchell's because he has less probes. And he's got a total of 24 less probes. That's about 12 more units that he can produce. And Mitchell is still in the process of rebuilding his gateway mass because he just lost a large chunk of it. But he also has a large chunk of it inside these shuttles and Corsairs ready to go for a drop. And now a mass stack there coming into his base. But once again, no observer. As I said before, no observer. So these two Dark Templars here are going to have a field day killing a lot of units. And they already have a quite a couple of kills. Shuttle drop there on the side. Fight here happening in the base. JH is gaining a lot of ground here with this mass attack. But once again, the shuttle drop there comes in. One scarab shot there on the Nexus and it gets taken down. And he might get some probes there as well. Doesn't get any probes there though. But at least the Nexus has been taken down. And also one downside of losing the Nexus is the fact that there's a lot of distance for these gazers to help him get gas income. Also, the mass attack here, the Observer has arrived. But the Observer is a little bit late. Just a little bit late. 
things are not looking pretty anymore for JH. Mitchell is somehow still on low minerals, but he's doing fine as his army is replenished and surviving the fight. JH doesn't want to give him time though, he's moving out with another army attack. But he's mostly focused on rebuilding his pro count, but he's still only on a single nexus. And as you can see, the fact that he's now long distance mining from these bottom gas is really hurting his total gas. He's running out of gas pretty much. Drop comes in, Drop gets sniped once again. Mitchell has played an iron defense. He's played this defense exceptionally well. Dark Templars there on the middle once again, really helping out with killing the, dark, the Dragoons. So many Dark Templars. I've rarely seen this many Dark Templars being built in a PvP, but he's making them useful. They're being useful. Drop there may, might have gotten spotted out, so he flies away. You note know, he's got Observers here. Well, Observer and a Corsair that are continuously spotting out those drops as well. A lot of Observers are on the sides to give him vision. Takes down the Observer there as well because he brought his own Observer. But now there's no detection against the Dark Templars. Take down 45 probes. Looks like he's not really committing to rebuilding his probes. He's mostly just suffering from having very few minerals and very few gas. He's really suffering here. He's really, really fallen behind quite a bit. Drop there on the side. Look at spotted out by the observers, but he's going to try to deal back a hit. He's going to try to trade a blow and hopefully extend the game. This one has to hit. Because he's running out of money. He's running out of gas. He has to kill these four cannons and build a nexus there. So he can get more probes and have more gas income as well. But he's gambling on hitting this shuttle drop. But there's Dragoons there ready to snipe. Because Mitchell of course saw it. Although he arrives on the scene. The Templar. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was the most clutch stasis on his own probes I've ever seen in my life. That was extremely close. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That was an amazing stasis. That stasis came down at the last possible second. The last possible moment imaginable. Those Templar, the storm would have killed all the probes. If not for this stasis landing as this storm was happening. Beautiful. Drop comes in there from the bottom side of JH's base. Drop milks it all the way. There's nothing to intercept it. Templar starts to unload. Templar's on the scene. Templar doesn't storm because it's too far away. And there are too many cannons to... <laughs> to... Well, too many cannons. Takes it down really easily. And now, one last mass attack from JH. He's going to try to break through. We've got another shuttle drop there on the top side there. The are going to take it down without any trouble whatsoever. Something's on probe, another front attack happening as well. He's got some Reavers there and some Arbiters. No Observers though, no Observers though. No Observers though. And yeah, so he's forced to pull back because no Observer means no detection. 40 units under the cloak of the Arbiter. He's gonna just clear out side buildings instead. But Minchil's gonna take this chance to block and lock those units into their poor choice. Gets a beautiful surround, he moves all the way into the middle, gets a surround on all the Dragoons and Gateway units from JH. And now JH is fighting a battle he doesn't want to fight. Great move there from Minchel. JH does have more units on the middle, who's gonna win this exchange. But still, he lost a lot of Dragoons that he doesn't have the money for to replace. Still only on 45 probes, he hasn't bothered rebuilding his probes whatsoever. He hasn't bothered. His army is massive though, having, having 15 more gateway units on the map is quite a big difference. But if you cannot use that difference to gain an advantage, you might as well not have it. Once again goes to kill pylons on the side. As his units spread out on the middle quite nicely, he's waiting for Minchel to move out and get a surround on those gateway units and then to definitively break through into the base. But Minchel knows he has to just stay safe, stay within his base, and wait for JH to go for the attack. Though now we've got a shuttle coming in under the support of a couple of shuttles. The Arbiter there comes in with the stasis on the shuttle and that is shut down. And now a drop here comes in with a lot of Corsairs to support it. Shuttle arrives on the scene. Templars are unloading. Templars are storming. Templars are storming on everything. Although missing, there's the mass hit. 
only five probes left and JH loses game number five and Mitchell is our winner of the day in this best of five series and takes home the W in this very, very, very well fought and action packed best of five series. One of the better series actually that I've seen in a while. This is a pretty good series. Very well fought, very hard fought. Great battle, great back and forth. And a lot of restraint in these matches. A lot of restraint to go for the exact, correct, and the right setups. Let's update that score chart here one final time and give Mitchell the win. In his best of five series, he made the miraculous comeback. It was down zero wins against JH, who had two wins at the start of this video. But he made the miraculous comeback of winning three games in a row, including a Zerk against Protoss match which is very rare specifically against a player like jh but he made it happen he made it happen and earned himself the trophy of this best of five set so i hope you all enjoyed this video hope you all had fun watching hope you all were entertained leave a like leave a comment leave a subscribe if you really feel like it and most of all i hope you come back for another video whenever I make another video. So that's it for today. This is RJB for RJB TV. This is a battle between um, JH against the Minchol. An epic versus battle. Wait, I can't select it. An epic versus battle between these two behemoths who definitely look like giant bodybuilders. Definitely, without a doubt, beefcakes, beefcakes of the highest class. Goodbye.